Okay, for this project, uh, we're going to use the principle of symmetry in order to cre uh, create a compelling logo. Um, we're also going to be using some of our Boolean operations here in Gravit. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to um, a really cool tool that allows you to vectorize um, raster images. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is bring in our um, pine tree image that you downloaded as part of uh, this project. So you can see I just I dragged it in here. You could also go to File and then Import uh, Place Image. Um, so if I zoom in on this, you're going to see that this, you know, despite being in a vector program, this is still a raster image and it's all pixelated as I zoom in. So what I'm going to do, just to center this thing up on the page, is go to Modify Path, and then I'm going to go to Vectorize Image. And so it'll take a second to process, but basically what's happening here is the program is is sort of tracing and scanning this thing in and it's converting it into a vector image. So now you can see if I zoom in, I have nice crisp edges and this has become a vector image. Now I'm gonna toggle this on right here. That is going to allow me to pull this off of the artboard or, or page. And what you'll see is it traced the uh, white and the black. And so I wanna get rid of the white, so I'll use my sub-select tool right here to just click on the white area. Uh, and I should be able to, if I'm having trouble doing that, oh, I don't know my sub-select tool. Sub-select tool, click on the white area and just press delete. So now I'm left with uh, just the black image right here. Now I am going to just sort of put this off to the side right now. We'll come back and get that later. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a uh, circle. We're actually gonna create three circles. So I'm gonna create one right here. And the size of this, just try to you know get approximate. I'm using an Instagram size um, document right here. Uh, so I'm gonna copy this. Um, and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set these precisely so you can follow along with me exactly. So let's uh, make this a 700 pixel by 700 pixel circle and I'm going to copy and paste this and I'm going to make the fill color just a little bit darker so that we can differentiate between the two and so here let's see what happens if we make I'm going to lock these in place if I make this 650 uh, and you know I'm going to go even smaller so 600 right here and then I'm going to center these items on the page uh, so I'll click right here We'll line that up here and there, and we'll do the same to this circle right here and there. Okay, I think that's gonna work. So now, what I'm gonna do is create one more circle, copy, paste. I'm gonna change my fill color just so that I can, again, differentiate between them. And this one, I'm gonna make 550. So 550 by 550, we'll center this thing up like so. Okay, now I'm gonna start using Boolean operations in order to cut these shapes out from each other. So the middle circle, I'm gonna click and then hold the shift a button on my keyboard and click on this other outer circle right here and I'm going to use the subtract or minus front if you're an illustrator feature so I'm subtracting this so now there's like negative space seeping through that's not a white ring or a white circle um, I'm now going to right click on this ring that I have created so I'll right click on this and if for whatever reason your right click isn't working I can go up to the toolbar right here and I'm going to convert this to a path and now what I'm going to do is create uh, a rectangle that's going to go on the midpoint of the circle and this ring because so I'm going to do another subtract trick. So I'm going to create a rectangle right here, use my guides to help line me up like so. I'm going to right click and make sure that this is in the front. And so I'll see if this thing can right click and then arrange and then bring to front. Um, that then allow me to select the circle and I'm going to click right here and subtract. So I'm just basically cutting that circle into an arc. I will right click. I will convert that to a path just so it's not that compound shape anymore. I'm going to repeat that step uh, with the ring that I have created right here. So a uh, rectangle right here covers the ring. I'll select both the rectangle and the ring and then I will one more time subtract like so. All right, now what I want to do is create a little spacer square. So I'm going to zoom in right here and I'm going to click on this anchor point and then hold the shift key to create a square so that the space from here to here is equidistant to the space from here to here. I'm also going to drag a guide so that it lines up on the end point uh, right here or that intersecting point. And then I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and I'm going to create a rectangle that 
spans across like so. And we'll make the height of this thing, now I don't want these connected, we'll make this um, 100 pixels. So it's 700 pixels wide, 100 pixels tall like so, and everything's lined up the way that we want it. All right, so now for this next part, what I'm gonna do is create a freeform little banner looking thing. And so I want this to go uh, from right up here, so not right up there, right, right, right around here. Again, we're sort of eyeballing it. And you know what we could do is we could take this square and we could line it up right here. And then I'll take my pen tool, go here, and I'm holding the shift key to go straight down and then 45 degrees over like so. And again, we're just sort of eyeballing here. I went a little bit too high there. So I'm gonna go to here, and there we go, 45 degrees right around there and then straight across and then i want sort of like the midpoint right here and then i'll use my smart guides to line this up so i've created this little banner piece as you can see right there i just did that with my pen tool so now i can duplicate this so i did the option uh, click drag trick right click transform flip horizontally and then i'll use my little spacer guide right here to position this one where I want it. All right, now I can delete this spacer because I no longer need it. And I'm gonna make this, just so everything looks the same, the same color as this. And now I'm gonna use a little text tool right here. And uh, we're gonna write, I like pine trees. Now, this is sort of silly, um, but this is what we're doing. All right, so I, in all caps, like pine trees. Now we're gonna take, uh, take that text and we're gonna select it all, and we're gonna make it open sans extra bold, and then we're gonna increase the font size. We're gonna have to play around with this just for a minute here, but let's try 72, see how that looks. Let's go ahead and take this and position it right here. So now it's centered um, in the rectangle. I think that's looking just great. All right, so we're gonna select this element, we're gonna convert that to a path, and now I can select my text object that has become a path in my rectangle, and I'm going to uh, subtract it. So now I'm cutting away from uh, the, uh, the logo right here. Now we're gonna do the last step. Take this pine tree that we took at the beginning, that we made at the beginning, we're gonna right click, we're gonna bring this arrange all the way to the front, we're going to resize it. I'm holding the shift key to maintain my aspect ratio. And I want it to be about the same height as this little center arch, like so. So let me get it right around here. I want it to be just a hair larger than it. So right around here, it's a little bit too big. I think that'll work. I'll center this thing up and I'm gonna eyeball it to sort of get it bounced over just a little bit. Select these two elements and now I'm going to again subtract. Or sorry, subtracting the pine tree from the um, arch. I'll right click, I'm gonna convert that to a path just so it's not that compound shape anymore. This still is a compound shape so I'll right click, convert that to a path. I'm gonna get rid of my guides because they're sort of obstructing my view, like so. And I'm gonna select everything right here, and I'm going to uh, right click, and I'm going to group that selection. Couple more steps here. I'm gonna take a, a photographic element, I'm gonna set that as my background. So the way that I'm gonna do that is gonna go to Pixabay, I'm gonna take a picture that I found of pine trees. I'll just simply copy this image and then here in grab it, I will paste it. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of resizing. Now I am gonna position this sort of in the top corner right here. I'm gonna turn this off now. So essentially what that'll do is it'll clip anything that's you know, outside. It's not, notice I can't see it because it's off the, uh, the side there. I'm gonna resize this thing holding the shift key to maintain aspect ratio. I want this to sort of take up as much space as possible. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to arrange, send to back. So now here's where we're going to make this semi transparent transparent. Now, currently, uh, we can't really adjust anything. Wait, I can adjust the opacity. So this is actually what we're going to be ending up doing right in here is just playing around with the opacity setting. And since this is a light gray, it actually kind of works just perfectly. And I can resize this and hold the shift key because everything is expanded. It'll, it'll adjust accordingly. Uh, just 
perfectly. And so that's pretty much the project. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating this semi-transparent logo um, that's using Boolean techniques as well as this image trace, te um, uh, image trace feature uh, built into uh, Gravit.